is a 2019 Kia K900, and you've probably never heard of it. It's a $65,000 luxury sedan with an available V8. Yes, that's right, a $65,000 luxury sedan with a V8 from Kia. It's just been fully redesigned for the 2019 model year, and it's intended to rival Mercedes-Benz and Lexus and Audi. And today, I'm going to review it. I've borrowed this K900 from North County Kia, which is my local Kia dealer here in San Diego, and they are filled to the brim with all of the new Kia models. And that's a good thing because Kia is in the middle of a product renaissance right now. They have the new Stinger and the upcoming Telluride SUV and a few other cars like the Nero. But then on the other end of the spectrum, they have this. I say that because North County Kia currently has 85 Sorento crossovers in stock, and they have 44 Sportage crossovers. They have two of these. Nobody knows what this car is, and very few people are going to buy it. But today, I'm going to show you all of the quirks and features of Kia's flagship luxury sedan. So here's a quick overview. The K900 is sized right in between the Mercedes-Benz S-Class and the E-Class, although it's priced more like an E-Class at around $65,000 for this almost fully equipped K900. Now, this car has the base engine which is a 311 horsepower turbocharged V6, but you can also get a 420 horsepower V8, like an old school luxury car. Now, I've already reviewed the K900, and I was disappointed by it, but that was the old model, which was missing a lot of the latest technology. This is the new one, and it's already out, and it has arrived in dealerships, and it is officially on sale in very small numbers. The reason it's not very popular, of course, is that the brand name Kia isn't exactly synonymous with full-size luxury sedan, and most luxury car shoppers have never even heard of this thing. But today, you're going to hear about it, and I'm going to show you around the K900, and then I'm going to drive it and give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the K900, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also compiled a list of some other other new cars you may not know about. Now I'm going to start the quirks and features of the K900 with a few of my favorite little quirks, starting with what happens when you put on the turn signal. Now in your car you put on the turn signal, turn signal goes on. In this car you put on the turn signal and a camera turns on in the gauge cluster that illuminates your blind spot which is really a great idea for lane changes. Now, Honda has had something similar to this, but it only works on the passenger side, and it turns on the infotainment screen. In the K900, it turns on on both sides and right in the gauge cluster, and it basically eliminates any problem you might have turning around any blind spot in the car. It shows what's there every time you turn on the turn signal unless you want to disable it. This is a brilliant feature, and I truly hope that all cars have this in the next five or 10 years. It eliminates all the blind spot safety issues. It is fantastic. I love it. By the way, one funny item with that blind spot camera system, when the camera turns on, it takes the place of your speedometer or your tachometer. And so Kia, instead of showing the speedometer, if the camera's on, displays it digitally. But I especially like the tachometer side, which shows a giant display of your current engine revs, which of course matters to no one <laughs> who's making a lane change in a K900, but they've included it. Another one of my favorite quirks in this car is the sound it makes when you turn it off. Take a listen. Now, I've heard car goodbye sounds like that before, but one thing I haven't seen before is a movie. This car plays like a little video when you turn it off. Take a look. Now, why does it do that? You turn off the car, it plays a noise, and then it shows you some artistic depictions of the car. Does anybody sit in here and they turn off, they're like, look, it's my car. My car is on screen, <laughs> yes. Next up, another one of my favorite quirks of the K900. Like most cars, this car has drive modes, eco, normal comfort, sport. But the thing I like about this one is if you put it in sport mode, the seat bolsters tighten. 
Kia can't give you a racing seat in this car like a GT3, but they can automatically tighten the seat bolsters when you go into sport mode, and so they do that. And I find it funny they do it in like this full-size luxury sedan that doesn't really have any sporty pretensions, but nonetheless, the idea is a good one. You switch back into comfort and the seat bolsters deflate and go back into their comfortable settings. Now, the next quirk that I absolutely love in this car is the gauge cluster, and you can see these dials are just far too futuristic and ridiculous for this car. This is just a simple sort of old school, comfortable luxury sedan. Why does it have these futuristic dials that are purple and they light up as you accelerate and it just seems like it's too much? Well, it turns out these are configurable and this one is called Midnight Violet, but you can change it for instance, to refreshing green. And when you do that, look at this, you have this ridiculous vertical display for the speedometer and the tachometer. It's even more absurd than midnight violet. And you can also change it to empowering red, which I guess is the sport mode one, and it looks sporty, and it shows the RPMs in this digital display so you know exactly where your RPMs are when you're taking your K900 on the racetrack. Now, configurable gauges aren't that surprising, but one interesting thing in this car is there's an auto mode. You can select auto and then the gauges, I guess, will change automatically with the drive mode. So you put in sport and then powering red will turn on. You put it in eco and then the green one will turn on, etc. So there's an auto mode for the gauge selection in this car. Rather unusual. Now for as futuristic and configurable and sporty as some of those gauge cluster options are, the clock in this car is the exact opposite. It's in the middle. It's an old school analog clock, more in keeping with the luxury character of this car. And on it, it says masterpiece. Now, I don't know anything about clocks. I don't even wear a watch, but I do know that this particular clock is in fact a masterpiece because it says it on there, and that is an easy way to tell. A little clock knowledge for you today. Now, next up, another interesting quirk worth mentioning in this car. If you drop the driver's side sun visor, Kia provides you with a little card that gives you voice recognition tips. And it says on it, to help optimize the Bluetooth voice recognition system, here are some tips like use full names, avoid using acronyms. Another one says avoid using special characters, emojis, or hyphenated names. But they didn't proofread this. Emojis is apostrophe S. It's plural, it's not possessive. It shouldn't be an apostrophe. This annoys me to no end. Come on, Kia, make this change for your future voice recognition cards. Allow me to have an impact on the world. Now, next up, I wanna discuss the interior in general in this car, and specifically the fact that it really is a beautiful interior. There are several pieces that I wanna highlight that are really nice. The seats, absolutely gorgeous, beautiful soft leather, nice stitching, nice design, they look wonderful. The door panels, same thing, absolutely beautiful, really nice look, and look at these speakers. You don't get this design on cars that are Kias, frankly. You get it on really expensive luxury cars, which this is trying to emulate. I also love the wood in this interior. Very beautiful, not ugly, glossy wood, but it has a really nice look and feel to it. You can see it on the door panel and on the dashboard and at the base of the steering wheel. And also, I like the fact that all of the buttons and switches feel nice to press, and they have a nice kind of cool-looking Kia font on them that isn't just a generic car font, giving this car a little bit more character and style on the inside. I'm not going to say this interior is quite up to the quality level of Mercedes-Benz or BMW or Audi, but it's not as far behind behind as you might think. This is a really nice interior, and not just for a Kia, just for a car. Next up, a few other interesting quirks while I'm up front. One is on the paddle shifters. You can see the paddle shifters are labeled with a plus and a minus for upshift, downshift, obviously. The weird quirk about these is that on the back side of the paddle shifters, where you feel them with your fingers, there are indentations. The downshift paddle has an indentation into the paddle. The upshift paddle, it pushes out from the paddle, so you can feel with your finger what is plus or minus, even though it should be obvious based on where they are on the steering wheel. Next, we move on to the back of the K900, where there are some other interesting quirks and features. Starting with, once again, the materials. Absolutely beautiful back here. Wood trim on the back of the front seats. The rear seats themselves, again, have a beautiful look to them. Gorgeous, soft leather. I also like the door panels. Once again, they're beautiful, and they have this beautiful speaker in them, and another beautiful speaker, and yet another beautiful speaker, <laughs> emphasizing just 
just how luxurious Kia wants to be. Throw another speaker on the rear door, make it even more <laughs> luxurious. But truthfully, it is a really nice place back here. But the most important and best part comes in this center console, which folds down from the middle. You can put a middle passenger back here, but why would you when you can fold down their seat and you have so many controls? Now, the best part of this rear center console is the fact that there is a rear wireless charging pad for phones back here. I've been in a lot of really expensive cars and I haven't seen that. It's an impressive feature. The strange thing is to get to it, you have to pull up on this little piece of plastic, you remove it, and then you can stick your phone in place and charge wirelessly. Now, this rear seat control panel has a lot of different functions. For example, you can change just about anything with the radio in the front. You can turn it on or off, you can change the volume, and you can change what mode you're on, FM, AM, satellite radio, media that you have plugged in, or Bluetooth, whatever. You can do all that from the back. Now, you can also change the rear climate controls from back here. No surprise, you adjust these little dials and you can change what temperature it is and you can change the amount of airflow and you can turn on your heated or ventilated rear seat back here as well, placing you in the lap of luxury as a chauffeured passenger. Now, the most odd part of this control panel is a button that's marked lock. If you press that, you can't control anything using the control panel. But of course, you can just unlock it by pressing lock again. So I'm not really sure. You can lock yourself from doing anything, but then you can just unlock yourself. It's, it's a really weird thing to see back there. You'd think the lock would be in front. And indeed, the front compartment does have a lock for the rear controls, but so does the rear compartment. No explaining that one, but it's there. Now, one other thing you can do with these rear controls back here is you can move the front seat. If you're sitting in the rear passenger seat and you want more legroom, you can actually move the front passenger seat forward in order to give yourself more legroom. And there's even a button there that's marked rest. You can press rest and it will automatically go into the most restful possible position without you having to hold down the controls and move the front passenger seat. That's something you see on luxury cars that are intended to be chauffeur driven vehicles, kind of rare on a $65,000 car or a Kia, but the K900 has it. One other interesting item back here, like I mentioned, this is a brand new car and some of the plastic hasn't even been completely pulled off it in order to preserve that experience for the first owner. My favorite piece of plastic that's still remaining that they put on at the factory is on the rear ceiling and it's this little blue dot surrounded by a plastic square. Why do you think that's there? What do you think that's protecting? <laughs> and next we move on to the trunk. And once again, the operation isn't all that unusual. It's power, like most luxury car trunks. You press a button and it automatically opens up and it can automatically close as well. It's a fairly large trunk, just like most larger luxury sedans. The most interesting thing in the trunk is the first aid kit. This is a serious first aid kit. It's hard sided, not soft like most other cars. They're not joking around with this thing. So what's in it? Well, I don't know. It's zip tied closed. Finding out what's in the Kia first aid kit will be a pleasure reserved for the first owner. Next, we move under the hood where this car has a turbocharged V6, 311 horsepower, like I mentioned, and there's also a V8 available. But if you get the turbo engine, you also get this plastic engine cover that says turbo. <laughs> in big print. It doesn't say Kia, it doesn't say V6. They're not trying to tout anything but turbo. It's like an 80s car with giant turbo graphics along the side. And next up also in front, we move on to the grill and specifically the sensor for the adaptive cruise control system, which they've tried to integrate into the grill design. Some automakers do this really well. Others don't do it so well. Kia, well, you know, at least they tried. It's pretty obvious that that piece in the middle is a sensor and not the actual grill. And finally, we move back inside to go over some of this car's tech quirks and features. I'm going to start with the center infotainment screen, which is actually really, really well done. First off, all the essentials are still buttons. So that's most of the climate controls and also items like the heated and cooled seats, the heated steering wheel that you don't necessarily want to go into various menus in order to find. You just want to press a button and turn them on. Kia does a good job keeping those as real buttons. Another thing Kia does well is the fact that this screen is large enough to display several things at once, specifically three things. You can see right now it's displaying the navigation, the radio, and the climate controls. And of course, if you tap on any of those things, it will bring it up larger so you can configure. You can move around the radio station, for example, or if you go to the navigation system, you can make it larger and then you can make it even larger still for a larger map or for the ability to type in your destination or whatever. It's a pretty good 
idea to provide three different important pieces of information there at once, so you don't have to go through various different items and menus in order to see the radio and the climate control, for instance. Now, it's also worth noting that you can actually configure the placement of those items on the screen. So if you want the navigation closer to you, you can move it there. If you want it further away, you can move it there too. And that makes it even more useful than just having three random things there. Now, as far as infotainment system quirks, how about this? I love the radio tuner in this car. Instead of using an old school dial or pressing a little button a bunch of times to change what radio station, you can just tap on this circle which station you want to dial up, and you can do it in large movements or small movements, whichever you want. That is a really cool idea, the best way I've seen a radio tuner done on a modern infotainment screen. But if you're one of these old people who just wants to use a dial like the old days, you can still do that. You can use the radio tuner dial, and that too will change the radio station. Redundancies are nice because you have customers who want different things, so it's good that they did that. And speaking of the infotainment screen and changing things, you use the screen if you want to change the time on your masterpiece. Change daylight savings time and the masterpiece time changes. Change it back and once again the masterpiece changes time. So if you would like to change the time on your masterpiece, <laughs> That's how you do it. And finally, an interesting quirk of the gauge cluster. This car has a driver drowsiness attention monitoring system. A lot of newer luxury cars have that. They can tell if you're starting to get tired behind the wheel, and they suggest that maybe it's time to pull over and take a break. But most cars will just say you're tired or you're not tired. The K900 goes a step further. It actually has a graph showing you how tired you are. And you can look at the graph and see, well, you know, I'm just a three out of five on the tired graph, so I'm good to drive for a while. Then I guess when you get down to the one out of five, that's when you're supposed to stop. That's when the car will alert you. And it even shows how many minutes it's been since your last break. Nothing like a nice tired graph in your luxury car. And so those are the quirks and features of the shockingly luxurious Kia K900. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right. Driving the K900. Now, when I filmed the video with the prior K900, one of the primary uh, things that I thought was good about the car was its engine. I had the V8 model and it really hauled and it was a good torquey engine and I really enjoyed that. Now this one has the twin turbo V6 with 311 horsepower, and I'm happy to report that it still feels like a very strong engine. Obviously everyone is going turbocharging now, but this car feels particularly potent considering it's only 311 horsepower. I'm actually surprised um, at just how, how strong it is. Now, the first thing you notice when you start driving this car, you put on the turn signal and you notice that blind spot thing. Uh, I gotta tell you, this is one of the great features in the car industry. The Honda CRV and a couple other Honda models have this, but not quite as good. It's only on the passenger side and it appears in the infotainment screen. But this is on both sides in the gauge cluster screen and it is so useful to the point where, I mean, you check your mirror and you check this thing and you don't need to do a shoulder check really. It's it's incredibly good. I can't, it's perfectly positioned and <laughs> it's just, I, I can, I'm merging onto a highway right now and I put on my signal and I can clearly see everything that's happening in the lane next to me between the mirror and that camera. I hope it trickles down to other Kias and frankly to other cars too because it's just a wonderful thing. It really, really is. On the highway, the car feels very smooth, very composed, but not as smooth or composed as an S-Class. An S-Class just feels so insulated and so floaty and so calm, and this isn't quite, quite on that territory. Um, it's very nice, to be clear. I mean, it's a nice luxury sedan, and it feels like a nice luxury sedan. It just doesn't quite have the feel of an S-Class, but it's half the money. So does it have the feel of an E-Class? Yeah, kind of, and honestly, the material quality, people always get on me when, I'm, when I compare Mercedes-Benz and Kia materials, but look around this car. There's no blanks. Everything feels incredibly good to touch. The wood feels real, looks good in the places where they've placed it. This is a really, really, really solid car interior. Now, in terms of handling, it's worth noting that this car is obviously a step behind like sport sedans. So if you're thinking about, oh, Stinger GT costs about the same, but here's a luxury sedan, it's all of that. It isn't really. This is intended to be a luxury car, no doubt about that. And it feels like a luxury car. So as you drive around, uh, the steering is very light. 
Um, easy to turn, it feels very nice, but light. And it's certainly better than the old model, which was just a wallowy little luxury car. This is a little tighter than that, but it still doesn't feel like a high performance sports car. When you're accelerating, it feels very strong, but you know, curves and that sort of thing, you're not gonna find that this is a tremendously exciting or thrilling car which is fine. I mean, that's not the market segment it's occupying. Of course, Kia has the Stinger GT for that market segment. And so that's the Kia K900. This car may not have the brand cachet of a Mercedes-Benz or even a Lexus or even an Acura, but it has everything else you'd want in a luxury sedan. A smooth, comfortable ride, a lot of great technology, and a nice big powerful engine up front. Plus, Kia offers something that none of its luxury rivals can touch. It's insane warranty, which covers the whole car, bumper to bumper, for five years, and the powertrain for ten years, which is excellent in a luxury car like this. This is a good luxury sedan, and it's worth considering for the people who want all of the nice luxury stuff but couldn't care less whether they have a luxury brand emblem on the hood. And now it's time to give this car a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the K900 is fine, but not thrilling or exciting. It's bland, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Acceleration 0 to 60 is 5.7 seconds, and it gets a 4 out of 10. Handling is only okay, exactly what you'd expect from a car like this, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Fun factor is low, as this car isn't very fun, nor is it designed to be, and it gets a 4 out of 10. Same with cool factor, nobody really knows what this is, and it's not like the brand name oozes cool, and it gets a 4 out of 10 for a weekend score of 22 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. The K900 is tremendously well equipped with some great features I truly love, like those turn signal blind spot cameras, and it gets an 8 out of 10. Comfort is excellent, and it gets an 8 out of 10. Quality is surprisingly high, the interior is gorgeous, and Kia's exceptionally long warranty provides great peace of mind, and it gets an 8 out of 10. Practicality is normal for the class, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Finally, value. This is an expensive Kia, but it's a bargain luxury sedan. Considering this car's tech and its comfort and its warranty, which is unrivaled in the luxury car world, it earns a 7 out of 10 for a total daily score of 36 out of 50. Add it up, and the Doug score is 58 out of 100, and you can see it falls just one point behind the Genesis G90, which is a highly similar car. The K900 score is the same as the G90 across the board, except in acceleration, as the G90 has a more powerful version of the same engine. The K900 ties the Lincoln Continental and just loses out to the Cadillac CT6, mostly due to the Cadillac's more exciting styling and the Cadillac's excellent new Super Cruise feature.